Hello everyone, my name is Esther and I'll be your host today for today's Facebook Live. Thank you so much for joining us from all over the world and wherever you're located, uh, we always find a way to get together to learn more about genealogy, family history and DNA. So we're so glad to have all of you with us. We have a great program for you today uh, with a friend of my heritage who we've had before and we're really excited about it. And before I get to today's show, I just want to let you all know that we'll be having a draw for a My Heritage Complete subscription. So in order to enter today's draw, all that you have to do is just leave a comment in the comment section. Tell us how you use my heritage, how it's helped you in your discoveries and uh, your family history and uh, what you hope to learn today. We'd love to hear that. Uh, so please leave a comment for us and one lucky winner will win a My Heritage Complete Plan at the end of today's show. A My Heritage Complete Plan is the best plan that My Heritage has to offer and it includes access to a lot of different features. I'll name just a few today. So one is access to 12.5 billion historical records from all over the world. So that's especially helpful if you're looking for relatives, um, you know, from international locations, uh, which I know a lot of um, our users use MyHeritage specifically to look for their global relatives. So that's very helpful. Also, you get unlimited family tree size, as well as free and unlimited access to MyHeritage photo tools. That's the MyHeritage photo enhancer and MyHeritage in color, uh, which we have uh, shown off at a lot of different Facebook Lives that we've done. So if you'd like to learn more about those photo tools, you can just go to our Facebook Lives, our previous ones, and watch them. Uh, and this is a good opportunity to let you know that you can watch all of our Facebook Lives that we have done in the past. They are available on the My Heritage Facebook page, facebook.com slash myheritage. Under the video section, you can see all the Facebook Lives that we've done um, and rewatch them. And so for today's show also, if you miss anything or you'd like to rewatch today's session, feel free to go check it out after and also to watch our previous ones. Um, so now I will introduce our speaker today. We have Melissa Barker. She's a certified archives manager and public historian. She currently works at the Houston County, Tennessee Archives. And she's known as the archive lady um, in the genealogy world. And we have had her before and Melissa is an excellent speaker and we always learn so much from her. So let me bring Melissa on to say hello. Hi, Melissa, how are you? I'm good, Esther. How are you doing today? Good, thanks. Thanks so much for joining us. Well, thank you so much for having me. I think that um, researching school records is um, a very important part of genealogy research and something that maybe genealogists don't think about. So I'm glad we're here talking about it today. Fantastic. We're looking forward. Uh, should I bring your slides up? Yes, please. Okay, great. Let me bring them in here. Just let me know when you can see them. And I'll there put we it go. In. You just have to go into presenter mode. Yep. How's Perfect. that? Does that look all right? Perfect. Okay. Well, we're going to get started. And um, I was looking at the chat as we were coming on and so many people from everywhere. Uh, that's wonderful. I'm so glad to see that there are genealogists all over the globe. Um, one little place uh, kind of caught my eye and it made me remember a very dear friend of mine. Uh, there's one or two of you in the chat that are from Wales. And I can tell you that um, a few years ago, I had a volunteer that volunteered at my archives and her mother was born in Wales. And uh, it's funny because I'm a horrible at geography. <laughs> and so I would always say something about her mother and I would say, oh yeah, she was born in England. And she would always correct me. She would say, no, she was born in Wales. <laughs> so I learned that lesson. So today we're gonna talk about school records. So school days and your ancestors, researching and school records. Uh, before we get started, um, and I've got a lot to get to and a lot to share with you, I want to emphasize the fact that the school records are going to be different and the availability of these records are going to be uh, in a wide range depending on where your ancestors lived and what was saved. These records are not something that is typically on the top of the list of importance to be preserved and saved in a lot of areas, no matter what country you live in. And so it's important to remember that what I show you today and what we talk about, um, 
by all means, go look for these records, but it's possible maybe they weren't saved, which is a sad thing. One of the things that I'm a huge advocate for is records preservation, uh, not only to preserve the records that we have, but to save the records of the past. And so hopefully this presentation is going to help you and encourage you to look for school records. Now, some of you are probably thinking to yourself, um, I have ancestors that didn't go to school or they only went to school up to the sixth grade. Um, I have some good news for you. You can still find those ancestors in school records, and we're going to talk about that. Uh, always in my presentations, if you follow me, the archive lady at all, and watch my presentations, you know that I show a lot of visuals in my presentations because I want to show you what can be found in archives. And so this is a great little photograph that I took for this presentation. These are some school uh, artifacts and memorabilia that we have actually on display in my archives. If you ever get a chance to come to Houston County, Tennessee, please come by the Houston County, Tennessee archives and visit with me. And we have like a mini museum. I like for my visitors to see, touch and, and experience our history. And so this is on display at our archives. And to whet our appetites, this is just an example of some of the school records that I have in my archives, which you're going to see a lot of different things today. Uh, these are the Lola Knight school scrapbooks and school registers. Uh, Lola Knight and her twin sister, Laura Knight, were both teachers in Houston County, Tennessee for many, many years. And so they kept, she kept scrapbooks. Uh, the school registers over to the left are actual registers that she kept as a teacher. Uh, the scrapbooks, the one at the top, uh, you can tell that these books are from the 1970s, those 1970s, you know, uh, uh, scrapbook things, that the photo books that we used to use that archivists will tell you don't, please don't use. The one at the top, though, is like from the 1970s, but the information, the photographs inside are from the 1920s and 30s, which is wonderful. And then the scrapbook there at the bottom is for our local Houston County uh, Retired Teachers Association. And so she had the gambit there, and we were very, very fortunate that they were donated to our archives. So what types of school records um, can you find in some of the school records we're going to talk about today? Well, you have elementary and secondary schools. These are public schools usually. That's a type of school record that you might be able to access. Universities and colleges. Now, when you're thinking about universities and colleges, yes, those are for our ancestors that actually attended these universities and colleges. Uh, but I would also encourage you to look here for any type of school record or any type of genealogical record for that matter. I find that genealogists tend to kind of overlook university and, and colleges as far as their repositories, their archives, their libraries on campus. And this is across the board, uh, not just the United States thing, in Canada, in Europe. We need to be accessing our universities and our colleges, their archives and their libraries. Because think about it, these colleges and universities are part of the community where they are. And so many times local records of all kinds are donated to these colleges and universities. And so if you can't find the record you're looking for in a typical local archive, library, historical society, check with the local university or college. You might be surprised. Um, Military academies also keep school records from when their students went to school there. Professional schools and special education schools. Um, my mother, actually, when she graduated high school, the, her last year, her senior year, she did not attend a regular public school. She actually got the opportunity to go to a professional school, and she learned to be a dental hygienist. And so look for these professional schools and special education schools to look for some school records for your ancestors. And private schools. Some of our ancestors may have went to a private school. Uh, there are plenty of them way back when and up until today. And so looking for the schools that our ancestors actually went to in a particular area may mean you have to do a little digging. It may mean that you have to check with different archives, historical societies, genealogical societies, even the local school board. Um, I'm asked all the time, where do I start with school records? I would start with the local school board uh, or the local school administrator's office. Ask them, what records do you have available? Where are the records, actually? Uh, and talk to them about what you're looking for.
Now, you need to remember that when you talk to a local school board or a local administrator's office, they're doing the day to day work of today. And so many times they'll tell you we don't have those records or those records were thrown away or we don't know where those records are. Don't give up. Keep digging. Keep asking those in the community who have been there for a very long time. Believe me, you're going to find where those records are if they exist. Here is an example of a very old school record. This is the Houston County Educational Institute, dated 1890. Uh, this is uh, this is um, a program from September 20th, 1890. And it's just one of the wonderful pieces of records that we have in our archives. And you can see there it lists the invocation, the address of welcome, and who did these things. And so as genealogists, we're always looking for names our ancestors' names. Um, right now, as sports is starting up, even in our condition that all of our countries are in, some of the sports are starting. And I am one of those, when I watch a sport that has a jersey, that has a name on the back of it, I'm looking at those names. So I'm always looking for names. So what kinds of records can you find in school records? Uh, availability of these school records, what I talked about at the very beginning, it's going to vary from state to state, from country to country, and from community to community. But don't let that discourage you uh, because you might just get lucky. The school records that uh, we have in our archives where I work are records that probably should not have survived, but they did. And so I'll talk a little more about that in just a second. Uh, as I said, I keep showing the wonderful things we have and that you can find in other archives too. This is the New Hope School Souvenir Holiday Greeting Card. It's from 1917. Now, New Hope was not, is not a school we have today in our area. It was one of those one-room schoolhouses. Uh, all across the globe were one-room schoolhouses up until a particular point that in the United States, they consolidated schools. Uh, and so looking for this one-room schoolhouse in the community where your ancestors lived is probably going to help you find those school records. Here is the inside of that souvenir holiday greeting card. Uh, as you can see, it lists all of the pupils. Well, this little card, it is probably only six inches by four inches. It's very, very small. But if it's the only thing that I can find with my ancestor's name in it, I can prove that my ancestor went to school what school they went to, and what year they were attending school. Wonderful information about my ancestor who went to school. So what kind of records? How about some school census and scholastic statistics? Now, we do have some school census records uh, that you can get online and are also at the local level. These census records helped to bring revenue into the particular area to help pay for those schools. And so this is one record that we might be able to find that will tell us about the school system, about the different schools, and even tell us about the teachers and the people that operated those schools. So when you're looking for school records for your ancestors, it's wonderful. We want to find those records for our particular ancestor with their name on it. But we also want to do some research and gather information and history on the schools that they attended. Enrollment records. You might find enrollment records that uh, were your ancestors as children and enrolled in their school. Now, of course, the enrollment would have been done by their parents or their guardian. And so these enrollment records could include some great information. Attendance records. I mean, many of us that are listening to the, you talk, listen to me talk and, us and myself, we all went to school and we had attendance. Um, we had to take that attendance and the schools kept these records. Subject and grade re records or report cards as we like to call them. Um, many times genealogists are looking for this or they think this is all they can find. Uh, believe me, there is much more out there that you can find uh, besides just a report card. Although those are wonderful. I have some of my grandfather's report cards and my great grandfather actually signed those report cards. Many of us may remember taking our report cards home, whether we had good grades or bad grades and having to get our parents to sign the report cards. So if you're looking for signatures of your ancestors, report cards is one of those places and school records as well, because many times 
parents or guardians had to sign paperwork for the school system. So it's a great place to find all kinds of information. And yearbooks. We're going to talk about yearbooks. Uh, My Heritage has a fantastic collection of yearbooks on their website, and we're going to talk about that. School newspapers. Uh, maybe the school that your ancestor went to had a school newspaper. And so we're going to talk about that. And then we're going to throw in some local newspaper research. Uh, many of our schools advertised in the local newspapers or they had stories that were run in the local newspapers about the goings on in the school. So local newspapers is a great school records resource. School photographs is another thing that many archives like to collect and preserve and make available to their patrons. And so finding maybe a school photograph of your ancestor is what you're looking for. And then Sunday school records, church records. Have you ever thought about a school record being the Sunday school records? So we're going to talk about that as well. So we're going to start off first with school census and scholastic population census. Um, these are records were normally recorded at the local level. If they survive, and you're going to hear me say this a lot, but if they survive, they are a great source for genealogical information. So what kind of information could they contain? Well, they could contain the name of the student, which is great. We're looking for our ancestors, their name on a record. They could also include the age of the student. And how fantastic would that be to help you to determine the birth of one of your ancestors if it's before birth records were uh, required by law? List of schools. If you're trying to find the school that your ancestor went to, for instance, if you know the community they lived, the city they lived, or the county they lived, or the, the parish they lived in, if you're looking for the particular school they went to, maybe this is how you'll be able to find it. And list of teachers. We're going to talk also today about what if your ancestor was a school teacher and what records can you find in school records about that ancestor who was a teacher. Here is an example. This is a general data concerning pupils census from 1929 to 1930. Uh, it's a little bit, I know it's a little bit not uh, big enough for you to see all the information. So I did this. Uh, as you can see over to the left, there is a list of students. This is the first grade. And then it gives their date of birth, not on all of them, but on some of them. It gives their age. It gives the address where the pupil lived. And then as you come across, you're going to see the name of the parent or the guardian and the occupation of that parent or guardian. So school records, if you can find them, if they're available, can really give you some fantastic genealogical information. Enrollment records. So what gets included in enrollment records? Students' name, which we always are looking for. Parents' names, which is wonderful to help us connect the parents with the students. Where they lived. Uh, we're always looking for where our ancestors lived. Maybe it will even give you an, an actual address. Many times we know the community or the city, but we want to know what road they lived on. Did it have a name? Did it have a number of the house, what number house that they lived in? So maybe you'll get that. And date of birth or the age of the student. Again, when we're trying to nail down when they were born, especially if you do not have a birth record, this kind of information will definitely help you. And possibly the name of the location of the previous school. Many students were transferred into uh, the school where you find them from a previous school. And many times the previous school, the name and the location will be listed in the school records of where they came from. So that's always great. This is um, a wonderful document. Uh, from that Lola Knight scrapbook that I just showed you. This is for the campground school. Miss Lola Knight actually taught at the campground school. This is from 1919 to 1920. And this is their enrollment record. It is a one teacher school, as you can see. It listed the boys on one side and the girls on the other side and gives their age. Now, we have girls here. These are their maiden names. Wouldn't it be wonderful if you're trying to figure out one of your ancestors' maiden names, you could find it in a school record. So this is an enrollment of the campground school. If you also look up there, it gives a little bit of information about the teacher. 
It says, taught by Lola Knight, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Ben Knight. What a wonderful piece of information that is. This is also an enrollment record. This one is for Cave Orchard from 1922 to 1923. Same teacher, Miss Lola Knight. Uh, this one I found very interesting. This one caused me to actually go have to do some more research. It lists boys and girls and their ages, and it lists what grade level they were in. So if you look at the first one, it shows Grady Baggett, Monroe Busby, Willie Hudson, and you can see the rest of the names. They're in the first grade. But look at their ages. You have a 14-year-old in the first grade. And I thought, how can a 14-year-old be in the first grade? After doing some research, um, I got a little known fact is, is that w back when there was the one-room schoolhouses, and I don't think that they do, them, do this today, whenever you came to school, they would test you. And they would see, what reading level are you at? And they would place you in the correct grade level for your reading level, regardless of your age. So that's why you can see a 14-year-old and a 10-year-old in the first grade. Then you see a 12-year-old in the second grade. And so that is why it's important that you do your research to understand these records that you find. Attendance records. Almost all schools kept a record of student attendance. These records were used by the schools to obtain their funding to operate their schools. And you know what? This happens to this day. So the attendance records is turned into the state or even the federal level. And that is how the funding comes to the particular school district. It happened way back then and it still happens today. So student attendance was extremely important, not only to keep track of, but in reporting. So what can attendance records help you in your genealogy research? It can place your ancestor in a time and place. We are always trying to do that, aren't we? We're trying to sometimes find where did they go? Why did they go there? Um, and when we find them, we're so happy to do that to find where they've been. I also can tell you the attendance was mainly in the winter months. Uh, this may just be a Southern thing. I don't know, a Southern United States thing. But think about your ancestors uh, and the seasons. Here in the South, many of, uh, of our children back then, when there were a lot of farming going on, would only attend school in the winter months. The reason being is because in the summer months, they had to stay home and help with the farm. And so I'm guessing that this happened in many other places other than the southern United States. And so think about what was going on where your ancestors lived. Were they farmers? Maybe that's why they only went to school certain months of the year. Or maybe that's why they only went to school to the sixth grade or the fifth grade. And then they had to go home and help with the farm. And so looking for school records, you're gonna, it's going to help you figure out placing them in a time and place. When did they attend school? And also, if you see an absence, if your ancestor is listed in a school record and it's showing their attendance and you see that they're shown as absent, maybe take that absenteeism and correlate it with an event in their life or an event in the entire family and nucleus life. Maybe there was a death in the family. That's why they weren't there. Maybe they traveled and had, then came back. This is a fantastic way to correlate this information with other life events in the family. Uh, we ran across a school register one day when we were working on school records at the archives. And the teacher had to report how many days of the year they actually attended school and how many they did not. And so she listed like two or three days that they did not attend. And then they, she had to explain why they didn't attend school. One of those days they didn't attend was because one of the students had died. I mean, and this was like a second or third grade class. And so immediately I'm thinking, oh, wow, a small child had, had died. This was in 1906. And this was before birth or death records was required by law in the state of Tennessee. This was not my ancestor. But I thought, oh, what a wonderful find this would be for a genealogist who's looking for this child. They know that they died between the 1900 and the 1910 census, but they don't know where or how or what. But it's in the school records. So great information.
So maybe you're looking for subject and grade records, or like we like to call them, report cards. I always dreaded having to take my report card home to my parents. I made decent grades, but mm, they could have been better. Uh, report cards are a great genealogy resource. Uh, they Most of the time, these kinds of records are found among family papers. Uh, that's the first place I tell genealogists to look for report cards is maybe they were in those box of papers you got from your grandmother. And so look there first. But they could also be found in manuscript collections and archived records at the local archive. So what can report cards tell you? Interestingly enough, if you want to know this much information about your ancestor, they can tell you the subjects that they were taught. Uh, it will also tell you which ones they did well in, which ones they did not do well in according to their grades. But I find it interesting to see what subjects were they taught because it different. It's different from, you know, 1895. It's different up to 1950 and so on. So it's always great to see what they were being taught. Did your ancestor take what they learned in school and then later use it in their lifetime? For instance, did they learn woodworking and maybe they became a carpenter? Maybe your ancestor who was a female learned sewing in school and they became a seamstress. So that is also a great correlation to try to figure out. Did this parent sign the report card? That is a treasure right there. I'm always looking for my ancestors' signature or handwriting. Um, as a genealogist myself, I've been a genealogist for 30 years. I am one of those unfortunate ones that I do not have a lot of original records. They just were not saved. I don't have any uh, old letters. I don't have scrapbooks or diaries, anything like that. So anytime I can find a signature or any kind of handwriting for one of my ancestors, I am so excited. Here is an example of uh, a report card from 1900. It's for Katie Redke. And as you can see, it gives her grades and it gives the signature of her parent or guardian. So this is an example of a great report card. Here's another report card. This is for Mary Elizabeth Shackelford. And it's from 1926. Uh, as you can see, her mother actually signed her report card, Miss Ruby Shackelford. I can tell you that Miss Ruby Shackelford was actually one of the county officials for a time. But think about it. You have a female ancestor that you found her report card. And not only that, but you found that her mother actually signed the report card each and every month. Report cards can be a true treasure. Here's the inside of that report card. It shows you her grades. It shows you uh, her attendance and great information. It shows you the subjects that she learned. Yearbooks. Uh, the yearbooks are fantastic. I actually have all of my yearbooks from when I went to school. I have my parents' yearbooks, and I also have a yearbook for my grandmother who graduated in 1940. Now, this yearbook looks like nothing I have in my bookshelf. It is uh, uh, papers of the records and things like that that usually comes into a yearbook, but the photographs in there are actual snapshot photographs that were just pasted into the book. And so I don't know if they made it this way for every student or if she just had one that was made this way. So I find it pretty interesting. Yearbooks are probably one of the most well-known of the records, school records that many genealogists try to find. Um, uh, yearbooks are just one type of record that is the most accessible. Uh, so what can we find in yearbooks? Here is an example of some yearbooks that we have at the Houston County, Tennessee Archives. Uh, our yearbooks, our high school here is the uh, Houston County Irish High School. And so our uh, yearbooks are called the Shamrock. So they're pretty interesting. You can find a photograph of your ancestor, a family member, possibly. Hopefully they were there when they took photographs. I've actually got uh, a couple of yearbooks where my father did not show up for school that day when they took photographs. So his photograph is not in the yearbook. Biographies of the students, and especially for seniors, for those that are fixing to graduate, they did maybe an extra section in the yearbook where they did biographies of the seniors who were graduating. Were your ancestors involved in sports, um, academic clubs, or social groups? Maybe these are also in the yearbooks. 
And all of this information just adds to your ancestor's story. And it, you know, it makes them come to life to me when I'm finding this kind of information and I can add that to my ancestor's story, they just come to life to me and it makes me want to research them even more. And this is something that maybe you haven't thought about, but business ads. Um, if your ancestor has a business in a local community, you really need to check out yearbooks because many of the businesses would buy advertising in yearbooks and put their ads in the yearbooks and that money went to help to produce the yearbooks. And so if you're looking for your ancestors business, I'm actually looking for a business right now for one of my ancestors out in Oklahoma. They supposedly owned a store back in the early 1900s. So right now I'm trying to find a photograph of the business. I'm trying to find any kind of advertising or information about the business. So I've been checking out the local yearbooks in the school system. Here's an example of the Erin High School yearbook from 1949. Uh, this is kind of a really neat advertisement. Each individual uh, business is represented, but it's hand drawn. And so I wonder if it was hand drawn by a student uh, or someone who was on the yearbook staff. My Heritage. I told you Mayor Heritage has a fantastic collection of yearbooks on their website. I would encourage you to go over there and look at what they have. Um, I've done that and I have been very fortunate in that I found an advertisement. This is the Elysian yearbook advertisement. This is Ellet High School in Ohio. This is the high school that my father went to. This is from 1956 and as you can see, it's got advertisements for the local businesses there. Um, I'm sorry, I went back the other way. So looking for those school advertisements and looking for the picture of your ancestor, maybe a biography of your ancestor, or maybe a photograph of them playing football. So yearbooks can hold all kinds of information that will tell you a lot about your ancestor when they attended school. How about school newspapers? Uh, many of our local schools, and it's normally high schools and maybe even junior high schools and maybe possibly the middle school level, uh, had school newspapers. And so the schools would publish the newspaper. Uh, they were generally written by and edited by the students themselves. And a lot of times they got grades for the work that they did on the newspaper staff. And so look for school newspapers. They will be uh, in archives. They could even be microfilmed. Check with the school that your ancestor went to to see if they have kept a collection of the old school newspapers. Maybe your ancestor wrote for the newspaper or was the editor or went out and sold advertisements for the newspaper. These school newspapers were run pretty much like regular newspapers. And it was giving the students the experience of how to write for a newspaper, how to operate a newspaper, maybe even do the selling of advertisements, because it's giving them a taste of this profession. And then maybe if they liked it, if it was something they excelled at, that's what they did for their life's work. Was your ancestor's photo in the school newspaper? I'll also tell you that sometimes local regular newspapers would put the school newspaper in their paper as an insert. That's what our paper here has done in the past. Uh, they would actually put it in the regular newspaper as an insert. So checking microfilm newspapers for that area, if they microfilm the entire newspaper, you might actually find the school newspaper included. Was your ancestor mentioned in an article in the newspaper? Maybe they did some on-campus interviews about a particular subject and they interviewed your ancestor and they are printed in the newspaper. So school newspapers is not something that you should overlook. You should uh, look for these in any way that you can find them. Uh, again, our local high school, the newspaper was called the Shamrock. Uh, this is from 1999. This is the masthead from that newspaper. Our uh, school newspapers were actually done just like I told you. They were inserted into our regular newspaper as an insert. And so now we can go to our microfilm newspapers and they have microfilmed these papers right along with the regular newspaper. And remember, I told you we were going to talk about local newspapers just the regular old local newspapers and how you can find your ancestors when they were in school 
in these newspapers. You need to remember that our local newspapers reported on events and happenings from the local school. Uh, many times though, as you probably know, these newspapers are not indexed. Uh, you might get lucky and find a run of newspapers where they've indexed the obituaries. Uh, but as far as indexing everything in the newspaper, that's usually just not done. So you're probably going to have to read through each and every newspaper to try to find what you're looking for. Uh, hopefully you can find these newspapers on MyHeritage. They have a great newspaper section. Or maybe you find it on microfilm at your local archives or library. But take the time to look at these local newspapers and see if they mention your ancestors during their school age time. And you might be surprised what you might be able to find. Local newspapers are notorious for listing honor rolls or class lists, like the top 10 of the senior class. Or they listed the person who made straight A's uh, for that particular semester. So look for those types of lists in the local newspaper. And this is something you can look for that you don't have to contact the local school board or try to track down school records themselves. This is just the local newspaper. How about sporting events? Uh, if your ancestor was into sporting events or maybe your grandmother was a cheerleader or when I was in junior high, I was the basketball manager. Um, I kept the time, I kept the score. I didn't play, I was not a sports person, but I was part of the team. And so think about what it takes to be part of a sporting team, what, wherever it is. And maybe your ancestor took a part in that. And you know, one thing that I find as a genealogist that I tend to do, and I have to rethink myself, is I think, well, my grandmother would never would have done that, or my grandfather didn't do that because they weren't that type of person in their older age. But you need to kind of open up your eyes a little bit and think outside the box and think, you know what, they could have been involved in just about anything as a younger person. And so look for those newspapers. Here is an example. This is the Erin Elementary School Cheerleaders. It's a newspaper clipping we have in the archives. Uh, these were the cheerleaders for an elementary school. This isn't even a high school or an upper grade level. This is elementary. This would have been grades one through five um, in our area. And so as you can see there, these are wonderful cheerleaders. And guess what? They list their names. And so this is what we want to find for our ancestors. Uh, and this is, of course, they're young. They haven't married yet, so you're going to get their maiden names. Social clubs. Many of our ancestors, when they were in school, were involved in academic clubs or maybe even social clubs of the time. So maybe those social clubs or those academic clubs reported to the local newspaper. Their happenings, their meetings, uh, the events that they had. And so look for these also in local newspapers. And academic achievements. Many of our ancestors had academic achievements. And so maybe it was reported in the local newspaper. I would look for things like this also in the school newspaper. And maybe they were in both. Newspapers are one of my number one things that I go to to try to find information in the local area. So if your ancestor was a senior, a graduating senior, either in high school, college, maybe they just graduated from one school to another school. Uh, maybe you could find their photo or a list or an announcement of the graduating exercises in the local newspaper. Uh, anything that I can find about my ancestor, I grab it up. Uh, I like to talk about how I want to know everything about my ancestor. I want to know what they had for breakfast. I want to know what their hobbies are. I want to know what, what academic achievements they had. What social clubs were they involved with? Because every little piece of information helps us to bring our ancestors alive and it keeps their story alive for future generations. Here's another newspaper clipping. This is the Erin High School class of 1943. Uh, I actually have this actual photograph in my archives, but this was printed in the paper. And not only was this printed in the paper, but this was printed in the paper many years later. So look for like the 50th uh, high school reunion of a particular class. Look in those newspapers in that year to see if the newspaper hasn't published something commemorating the 50 years. Uh, 
And as you can see, it lists all of the names of the students and a photograph. This one I love. This is another clipping. This is the Aaron Elementary class visit to the circus. The circus came to town. This is from the 1950s. And as you can see, the students and the teachers, and there's an elephant. I love it. And someone went in and wrote the names on the actual people in the photograph. You just don't know what you're going to find in, in newspapers. That's why when I do newspaper research, I hardly ever use an index or use a search engine. I go to the newspapers and I just start on page one and I just start reading. I have tried to go look for an obituary, for instance, or um, a birth announcement or a marriage announcement in a newspaper. And I may find that particular piece of information I'm looking for. But when I read more or the entire newspaper, I find so much more on the family. They're mentioned over here for this event, or they're mentioned as an advertisement because they owned a store. So it's important that you kind of take the time and to read all of these records thoroughly. So school photographs. Um, I don't know about you, but I don't have enough photographs of my ancestors. And I have very few school photographs. And so genealogists are always looking for photographs of our ancestors. We want to know what our ancestors look like. Uh, school photographs are a unique type of photograph. They um, were staged differently, and many times they weren't saved, which is sad but true. You're going to find that these photographs come in either like a group class photo where it's all the students together, just like this one. This is a class photo taken in 1961 of the Erin Elementary School. Uh, uh, this is a fantastic photograph. I can tell you I couldn't put it on this slide, but uh, someone we've actually had all of these students identified, which is fantastic. Uh, the teacher is Miss McKinnon, and uh, this photograph is one of our treasures that we have in the archive. So wouldn't it be great if you were looking for photographs and you found one of your ancestor in a group photograph? Fantastic. Here's another type of group photograph. This is a newspaper clipping again from the class of 1935. And remember when we were talking about that maybe even in newspapers more recently, they would publish old uh, photographs. This actually is from 1983. And they posted or published this class of 1935. So like I said, look for later issues that may have published old school records. Uh, again, yearbooks. We just talked about yearbooks. You can find photographs in there. Newspapers. You can find school photographs. And actual school photographs. Uh, you may have a school photograph of your ancestor. I have some of my mom and dad when they were in school. Many times they were done just as they were seniors, their senior photograph before they graduated. But uh, I know for me, my mother had my photo, the school photographs for me from the time I started kindergarten all the way to when I graduated high school. And so depending on what kind of photographs were taken, uh, you might be able to find a school photograph of your ancestor. Here is a really old school photograph. We do not know uh, which school this is for in Houston County. It is from the early 1900s. The only person that is identified in this photograph is the gentleman, uh, the child, actually, on the top row, the far left. His name is Ernest French. And we only know that because they wrote the name on the photograph. But these are fantastic treasures, and we need to try to find them. This is a school uh, yearbook photograph of my father. I found this on my heritage. Uh, it was a wonderful find for me. The Alicia yearbook for Ellet High School. And I'm pointing to my dad, Robert Lee Master. Uh, unfortunately, he, he just passed away this past November. But um, what a wonderful thing to be able to find his yearbook and his photograph from the eighth grade on my heritage. So universities, colleges, military schools, and private schools. I kind of lumped all these together because um, they can all be a huge subject on their own. And we don't have all day to talk about school records, which I would love to stay here for hours and hours to do. Uh, local public schools are not the only resource for school records. So don't forget universities, colleges, military academies, and private schools. If your ancestors went to any of these schools, 
those are going to be where you're going to want to go to look for these records. And believe me, they have records too. Uh, you might find the university college's transcripts for your ancestors. Uh, maybe you're looking for your own transcript. Contact the college or the university and see if you can get that. How about theses or dissertations? Uh, these were saved and they are available. So when you know where your ancestor went to school, check to see if they have a thesis or dissertation on file. Uh, great to get a copy of that and just see what your ancestor was writing about. Again, school newspapers. These particular schools also had school newspapers. So check for those with the schools. Sports clubs, civic clubs, social clubs, and fraternities. Don't forget fraternities. Uh, many of your ancestors or family members when they went to colleges, universities, or private schools were part of a fraternity. And so check for the sports, check for all the different clubs that they may have been involved in. And don't, don't forget now, they may have been involved in more than one club. So don't just, if you find one, don't think, well, that's it. Look to see if maybe they were involved with more than one club. This is um, a wonderful piece of uh, document that from the, uh, this is Gertha Brooks, I'm sorry, this is Gertha Brooks College Student Report. Uh, this is the Middle Tennessee State Teachers College. Uh, right now, that college is called Austin P. State University. So it changed its name. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Many of our colleges started out as small colleges or like this has always been a teaching college, but they had a different name. So you may have to do your research to figure out what's the history of that college. And then you might be able to find those records. This is her report card from 1925. Uh, Miss Gertha Brooks actually ended up graduating, having her teacher certificate, and she taught in Houston County for many, many years. And here's Austin P. Normal School. Uh, this is also Gertha Brooks. We have lots of records for Gertha Brooks in our archives. They were donated. We have these records, and also we have some other certificates. So what if your ancestor was a teacher? Um, I actually do not have any ancestors in my lineage that were teachers, but maybe you do. And many times I find that if there's one teacher, generation after generation, there's more teachers. And so what kind of records can be found for our ancestors that were teachers? Here's Miss Gertha Brooks again. This is her uh, elementary license that she received upon, co upon completion of her college degree. And so this is a fantastic record. We have the original on hand. This is what she would have presented uh, when she was hired to be a teacher. But I have the red arrows there because I love the wording of this. This is actually from 1919. So remember the time period. It says this certifies that Gertha Brooks is a person of good moral character who does not use intoxicants, opiates, or cigarettes and having passed examination required by laws entitled to teach in the elementary schools. I found that wording very interesting. And here's the back of that certificate. The back of that certificate gives us her grades in the subjects that she took. And so uh, didn't do too bad. Uh, she probably could have done better there in uh, physiology and hygiene. Uh, her music score was a little low, but uh, not too bad. But it wasn't that great if your ancestor was Gertha Brooks and you had this information. Here's another Gertha Brooks. This is her contract to teach. Now, these records are, were located in what the, a collection, a huge collection of records that we received at our archives from the local school board. These records were in stored in a room that, believe it or not, they really didn't know that whether they were in there. One of the people who worked in the office was retiring, and thank goodness she was into genealogy. She was a good friend of mine, and she made sure that these records came to our archives before she retired. So this is the actual contract that Gertha had with the school system to teach. So it's, it's actually a very unique record, and I would say a very rare record, because many times these are just not saved. So here's the one that a lot of you were probably waiting to hear about. So your ancestor didn't go to school. So why should I actually look and research in school records? Um, I have ancestors that didn't go to school. 
my a husband who I researched his family, he has ancestors that didn't go to school or maybe they only went to school to a certain grade level and then had to drop out to help, for, you know, on the farm or something. But I'm telling you that even if your ancestor didn't go to school or they only went to school for a few years, you could still find them in school records. Maybe your ancestor worked for the school. Have you ever thought of that? Maybe your ancestor did work for the school, not as a teacher, but maybe they did some other work that there was records generated. Did they deliver coal or wood for the school stoves at the one room schoolhouse? You know, many of the local citizens did a lot of work for the local schools. Maybe they drove a bus. They maybe didn't go to school, but maybe they drove the school bus and maybe there's records for them. Uh, maybe they provided handyman work for the schools. Maybe they fixed a window or helped with something else, building cabinets, anything like that. They would have had to have turned in an invoice and gotten paid. Maybe there was a record of that. But maybe your ancestor also served on the school board. The records that I talked about that we received in our archives date back to 1895 all the way up to the present day. And the ones from 1895, we also have school board minutes. These are when they met to talk about things having to do with the school system and they kept the minutes. And so maybe your ancestors were on the school board. Here is a perfect example of someone who did not go to school, but there's a record in the school records. This is an invoice that Luther Stringfield, this is my husband's great uncle, for him that he got three tons of coal and he delivered it to the schoolhouse from 1965. This gentleman did not go to school, but yet his records are in the school records. This is another one. This is a public school warrant. Anytime you see something that's called a warrant, most of the time this is the same thing as a check. This is payment. This is for Wade Stringfield, the brother of Luther. This is for a voucher for used books from 1953. Now, what is a voucher for used books? When your children, back before we had the free book program in the United States, your children, ha you had to actually purchase books. So you think about these poor farmers who had to purchase books. When they were done for the school year, they could turn those books back in and get a portion of their money back. So this is a voucher for those used books. So what's wonderful about this record is, first of all, Wade Stringfield also did not go to school. So we have a record for him in the school records. And then I turned this. This is a check. He would have taken it to a bank or to a local store and cashed it. So I turned it over and look, he has signed it or he has endorsed the back of this warrant. So now I have his signature. School board minutes. These can actually be a gold mine for the genealogist. Uh, some of these can be found online, but many times you're going to find these at the local school board. Uh, they could mention your ancestors who went to school or your ancestors who didn't go to school. They could mention the hiring and firing of employees, mention purchasing and selling of school property, what if your ancestors sold some property to the local schools so they could put up a schoolhouse there on that property? Possible. Um, then it also talks about general operations of each individual school. Now, again, going back to when there was all these one room schoolhouses, there would be a schoolhouse in each little community. I know in our small Tennessee county, we had close to almost 60 schools over a period of time in our little county. Now we have four. So each little community would have their own little one-room schoolhouse. Here's some examples of some school board minutes. Now these are transcriptions. I did not uh, scan the actual school board minutes because they're a little bit delicate. This first one is from January 11th, 1908. It says a petition of 29 families representing 50 pupils came before the board asking said board to establish a school at the Welker place uh, on Leatherwood Creek near the J.W. Welkers. After due consideration, the matter was deferred to the April meeting and it lists some of the school board members. So what if you're researching the Welker family and you find out that they put a schoolhouse on the Welker place? and you found it in the school board minutes. So see, we need to look at every single record that we can to try to find our ancestors.
Here's another example of scoreboard minutes. This is from 1912. W.A. O'Gwen is allowed an amount sufficient to hauling wood to schools to cover the amount of board timber he received left over from the Long Branch School. Each commissioner is allowed to open the schools at such time as may appear to him best for his people. Uh, and so it, these school board minutes have all kinds of, they talk about when the schools were built, how they built them, who were the teachers. Every year they would put in the school board minutes every single teacher they hired and how much those teachers got paid. Um, when they hired a worker to haul wood or to haul coal. So if you can find school board minute books in the areas where your ancestors went to school, or even if your ancestors didn't go to school, I would highly encourage you to read them. You may find some fantastic information. Here's another example from 1924. The purpose of this session was to address the question of transportation to the Yellow Creek School. Uh, maybe you'll find how your kids, the, your ancestors' children got to school by bus, by wagon. Uh, maybe they walked. But this is some great information to help tell the story of your ancestors, but also to tell local history, the community history and school history. Sunday school records. Did you ever think about Sunday school records for school records? But they are a type of school records. Many of our churches, if they have the, the denomination has them, they would have Sunday school for children. And many of them have Sunday school for adults as well. So many of your local churches may have saved and preserved their Sunday school records. What can be found in Sunday school records? Well, you have the teacher's name, whoever taught the school. That might be in there. Class attendance. Sunday school also took attendance. Membership list. Many of us go reach out to many of the churches and denominations to try to find church records for our ancestors. And our Sunday school records also will have membership lists. Dates and places. What we're always looking for. When was our ancestors at a certain place? Where were they? This is all information that helps us try to tell their story and also propels us to finding other records that we're looking for. This is a Wells Creek Sunday School book from 1932. This was donated to our archives and it has some fantastic information in it. It has the name of the Sunday School student, their address, <clears throat> the date they enrolled, and the date that they withdrew from the class. I'm going to go back to that record. Uh, this is great information. This is not typical school records information, but it's church records. It's Sunday school records. So we just never know when we're going to find the records we're looking for for our ancestors. And maybe you're thinking to yourself, well, I never thought about school records or I never thought about Sunday school records. Well, put it on your to-do list and start looking for these records. And so how do we find the records? I'm asked that all the time. Okay, Melissa, you've told me all about these wonderful records. How do we find these records? Well, you need to do a little research. You need to find out what's available. You need to find out where are the records located. It may mean you need to talk to an elderly person in the community that's been there their whole lives. And you need to ask the question, where are the records? Talk to the historical society, the ge genealogical society. Talk to anyone in the community to find out where are they having the records either stored or where they're being archived. First and foremost, I would encourage you to start with the local school district or the local school board. Now, they may have already transferred these records to a county archive or to given them to the historical society or even sent them up the chain to a state archives or, um, you know, a higher type of archives like that. But start with them talk to them and see if you can find out where their records are. Libraries. Libraries can hold these kinds of records. Archives. Maybe that's a local county archive. Uh, maybe it's a state archive or it's a territory archive. But historical and genealogical societies can be your friends on this uh, because many of these groups are populated with genealogists themselves. And guess what? They're looking for the same kinds of records. So hopefully the historical society or genealogical society in a particular area will already know where these records are located and can help you find them.
And also contact those colleges, universities, and private schools and talk to them about their records. So thank you very much for attending this live uh, Facebook webinar. Uh, there's my email address. If you want to contact me about school records or anything having to do with archives or records preservation, please do that. And then find me on Facebook as the Archive Lady. And then there's my blog, A Genealogist in the Archives. And I hope you've enjoyed me talking to you about school records. And I really hope it encourages you to think outside the box, go look for these records. And I hope you find all kinds of records for your ancestors who attended school and also who didn't attend school. And so with Esther, with that, I'll turn it back over to you and I will gladly take any questions. Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much, Melissa. That was so thorough. And um, I think that there were so many people who said this will really help them break through their brick walls. So really, really a lot of um, avenues that they can now go and explore. So thank you so much for that. I see that we have um, a whole bunch of of nice comments. So I'll just read a couple before we get to questions. Uh, Teresa says, didn't think about business advertising in yearbooks. My grandfather had a grocery store. I have a picture of the inside, but not the outside of the store. So yeah, Teresa, that's a, a good lead for you. <laughs> um, Heidi says, my heritage helped me find my father's biological family. Really incredible, Heidi. And we'd love to hear more about that story. So please message us um, if you can. Um, Becky says, I've really been enjoying using the photo enhancer and adding color to some of my ancestors' pictures. Thank you so much for providing the photo enhancer. Um, so just as uh, Melissa, I wanted to point out that the yearbook collection on my heritage can is colorized. So you can actually go into those yearbook photos and you can just uh, click on the colorize button and then you can see your ancestors who are in black and white yearbook photos actually in color. And that's also a really incredible tool uh, to bring your ancestors and their school photos to life. So um, just another thing to, to kind of point out there. Uh, we'll get to a couple questions here. Um, Sherry asks, what if you are not sure of the year that your parents were in school? Uh, well, if you're talking, uh, I would start with this. If you're not sure what year they were in school, take their birth or their age, you know, if you know about when they were born, add 18 years, roughly, give or take a year. And then that's when I would start looking for school records for their senior year. And then that will help you to kind of pare it down to go down the, the ladder to the elementary school years and that's but if you but usually about 18 is when your an ancestor would graduate from high school. Uh, sometimes they would graduate at 17. If you're lucky, they might graduate a year or two earlier or, or a year later. But that's a good rough estimate to start at age 18. Uh, and then start there and then work your way down to looking for those uh, elementary school records. Okay, Christy asks, how far back do these school records in general go? Well, that is a question that will depend on the particular area. Uh, the county where I live in, the records that we have date back to 1895. Our county was formed in 1871. So it's important. That's why it's important that you talk to those in the local area uh, to find the records, but then talk to them about how far back do they go. They may have certain types of school records that go back to 1895, you know, but then they may have other certain records that only go back to 1920. 25. So that's why it's important for us to ask those questions. Carol asks, how about Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts records? How do we locate them and where do we go to in research? Wow, that's actually one I haven't thought about. And my daughter was actually in Girl Scouts and I was in Girl Scouts as a child too. Um, I've never done anything with those records. So that's something I need to look into. But I would suggest that you reach out to your local um, Girl Scout or Boy Scout troop that is in wherever the areas that your ancestors lived. If they have a troop today, uh, talk to them. See if maybe they can help you. Maybe, the you know, I'm going to guess that the Girl Scouts and the Boy Scouts maybe even have an archive somewhere. Uh, I don't know if they keep records like that from the local level, but my, if I was going to do this, I would start with the local troops there in the area. Uh, 
Okay, great. And uh, that's all the time that we have for today for questions. So thank you so much to everyone that came and for all of your comments and questions. And it was so thorough. I think a lot of them were also covered in the presentation. And now we'll be choosing the winner for the MyHeritage Complete Plan, the best plan that we have to offer on MyHeritage. And thank you to everyone who entered and who wrote a comment in for us. Uh, we really appreciate all of your feedback. And, uh, and if you haven't written yet also, um, I know it's too late to enter the competition, but please do tell us what you'd like to see at our next Facebook Live, what topics we haven't covered yet. Uh, we'd love to come back and provide you with more and more of this great content from genealogists like Melissa who have so much to share with us. So please do let us know what else you'd like to learn about. And for anyone who missed it before, you can go back and watch all of our Facebook Lives on the MyHeritage Facebook page, facebook.com slash MyHeritage under the video section. And in case you missed any of today's session, it will be there as well. So today's winner of the MyHeritage Complete Plan is Tiffany Socorso, and Tiffany said, most of my ancestors didn't finish school. A majority of them only completed elementary school. Only a few of them completed school and for college degrees. I don't have a complete subscription, so I can't do as much research as I'd like, but I work on my family tree daily using different resources. I'm beginning to work on my European ancestors, but I'm having trouble finding info on my paternal grandmother's side of the family. They were very secretive, so I'm incredibly curious to find out what they're hiding. Uh, well, Tiffany, we hope that this complete plan on my heritage will help you unlock some of those doors and uh, break down some of those walls and let us know what you discover with it. And we'll be in touch with you through private message to claim your prize. So congratulations. Um, thank you all for watching today. And Melissa, thank you again. It's always a pleasure having you on our Facebook lives. Thank you so much for having me, Esther. It's been it's so much fun to get with MyHeritage. Uh, MyHeritage's records are just phenomenal, and I encourage anyone and everyone to go there and get a subscription and start doing your research. Thank you so much, and uh, we hope that you all have a great day, and we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye. -bye.